If you want a better way to communicate data between game code and UI without coupling them together and without using it all actors or widgets of class or using property binding which runs every frame, then view models can be a better solution. The view model plugin was introduced in Unreal 5.1 and its purpose is to allow programmers to work on game code without depending on a finished UI and UI designers to style and test their widgets without depending on a finished game system. A view model is simply an object that holds the data the UI is interested in and notify listeners to any changes to this data. In this video, we are going to show different ways to create view models in both Blueprints and C++ and how to bind and listen to view model changes by creating this simple example that shows the player health and inventory items. Two quick notes to clear out before we start. We will be creating our example in 5.3 and the plugin has seen lots of improvements in that version. And the second is that it's still in beta, so be aware not to ship projects with it until it's fully released. With that out of the way, let's get started. Once we enable the plugin, we can start by creating our first view model. When thinking about what data should one view model contain, it is recommended that view models are small and modular. So, rather than having a single view model for combat data, inventory items, and player progression stats, it's better to separate it into multiple smaller and manageable ones. In our example, we have a health bar, so we can create a health view model for it. To create that view model, we can drive a child class from MVVM view model base. Then we add the variables our UI is interested in, in this case the health variable, and mark them as field notifies from this ring bell if you are using blueprints. This is what allows variables to notify the system that their values has changed. If you are using an older version than 5.3, this can only be done in C++, as it wasn't exposed yet to blueprints. In C++, to let variables notify the system when their values has changed, we need a couple of things. Variables must first be exposed to blueprints in order to be exposed to view models. We do that by marking them with blueprint read or write specifiers. Then we need to mark them as field notifies. This is equivalent to the ring bill in blueprints. And a last step we need to do is to manually call one of these macros when the variable or the field's value changes. The setter macro sets our field to another value and only calls the second macro to broadcast changes if the new value is different from the old one. While the broadcast macro, as the name says, simply broadcasts that the field has changed to notify listeners. A good place to call these macros is inside setters of that field. To create a setter or a getter for a field, we can mark the field with the setter or getter specifiers. These specifiers let the system look for functions named as set or get followed by the exact same name of the variable and call them instead of reaching to the variable directly. If you want to use custom names, we can still do that by providing their names after the setter or getter specifiers. Functions can be marked as field notifies as well. This can be useful when we want to make some calculations, conversions, or formatting when a variable changes. For example, calculating the percentage of the health variable when it has changed. There are some conditions that must be met in order for a function to be allowed to be a field notify. The function must be pure and constant. It must take no arguments and it must return a single value. Now, Let's get back to the editor and see how we can initialize our view model and use it at runtime. Here we have a simple user widget with a health bar and a list view for the inventory items. For the widget to fetch or create our view model, we need to open the view models tab and add our view model to it. Now our view model is linked to this widget, but it is not yet initialized. There are five methods to initialize or create a view model. Create instance creates a new view model instance with each instance of the widget. That's lots of instances. This is useful when we want each instance to have its own data and not be affected by other 
instance. We can still manually control the creation of the view model after the initialized callback in C++ or the uninitialized event in Blueprints. The system will only create a new instance if the view model was not set, and that happens between the pre-construct and the construct events. Now, for our game code to reach the view model at runtime, we can use some helper functions through the MVVM view model subsystem and reach it through the widget. The second creation method is manual. This method means that the view model object is initialized later on by us, whether inside the widget or anywhere else. For example, we can create the view model once in our game code. And when new instances of the widget are created, they can be assigned that same single view model. One use case for this is if we have multiple widgets interested in changes to our player health. Maybe a game end screen, a health bar, and a damage UI effect. They all should be using the same health variable coming from a single view model. The third creation method is the global view model collection. This is the one I'm using the most. It totally decouples the widget from the game code by adding a global collection of view models between them. This is a game instance subsystem that is easily accessible from anywhere. To use it, we can access the collection from anywhere and add the view model instance to it. The context is very important here. It must match the one we set inside the widget. Another thing to note as well is that the instance of the view model will be valid, even if we transition between levels, as it's stored inside a game instance subsystem. To fetch the view model from anywhere in our code base, we can call the findViewModelInstance function from the view model, model collection. A good example for this is a settings or an accessibility options screen, where data is coming from multiple places. The fourth creation method is the property path. This one is useful when we know where the view model object exists, and instead of the view model instance being sent to our widget, our widget goes and fetches it. In this example, we create a health view model inside our player character and store a reference to it. Now, to fetch it from the widget, we can write the path from the widget to the view model, which will look something like this. The get custom player character function is a function we made inside our widget to get our player pawn and cast it to our custom character. The last creation method is the resolver object. This was added to 5.3, and it is very useful. It allows us to fetch or create the view model with our own logic and implementation by creating a resolver class and overriding its create view model function. Now, our view model is initialized. The changes are being broadcasted at runtime, but no one is listening. To listen to changes in a view model and change our UI based on that or act appropriately, we can use view bindings. But to avoid confusion with the legacy binding system, let's disable it through the project settings. This will let the compiler warn us if we have any use of the legacy binding system. There are multiple ways to create bindings. The fastest is to drag and drop view model properties on the widget property we want. If we open the view bindings tab now, we can see a binding created for us. The arrows indicate the direction of that binding. Are we listening to changes in the view model? Making changes to it, or both? We can also use conversion functions. If, for example, the view model has a string variable and we have a text block inside our widget, we can use a conversion function to convert from string to text, for example. There are some caveats when using view models. For example, arrays and view lists are not normally accessible in view models. If we have an array of items that we want to bind to a list or tile view, it can be a little confusing to achieve it. Since, if we try to bind to the loss views add item or remove item functions, you will need to create a field notify function in our view model that takes an item as an argument. And that violates the conditions for making a field notify function. One way to go about it is to bind the view model's items array to the list views set list items function. Now, when a new item is added or removed from our view model array, we broadcast that change and our list gets updated. The second caveat is map properties. 
If we have a map property in C++ that we want to set its value using the setter macro, this will lead to an error, as the macro needs to check if the property has changed or not, but the map property doesn't override the equals operator. One workaround this would be to wrap our map variable with a struct, and override the struct's equals operator. These caveats or minor issues are good to know about before using view models. And I'm sure they are getting addressed in future versions as the plugin is still in beta. So, once again, be cautious when using it. Project files can be found in the description below. And if you like this content, consider supporting the channel through Patreon. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. This was Amr, and if you are interested in more UI videos, consider checking this one.